everyone. In today's class, we will discuss a concept known as the sorting. Sorting is the method to arrange the data either in the increasing order or in the decreasing order. We do have multiple techniques available to us to arrange the data in different manner. The first method is known as the bubble sort. We have got insertion sort. Along with that, we have got merge sort. And we have got heap sort also. These are the different techniques which I use for arranging the data in the ascending order or in the descending order. Let's discuss that what is bubble sort. For understanding bubble sort, I will be taking up a random data set. The data which I will be considering is. Fifteen, fifteen, seven, nine, and six. So now I will arrange this data in some sorted manner with the help of bubble sort technique. Whenever we talk about the bubble sort technique, the method is used in such a way that you have to do the comparison between two adjacent elements where you will start from the zero index. The 16th element is saved at 0 index. This one is saved at 1, 2, 3, and 4. There are in total 5 elements in this given array. So if I arrange all those elements in the array, the first element is saved at the 0th index. So in the bubble sort technique, we have to do the comparison between the adjacent elements. In the first comparison, I will compare 16 with that of 15. So whenever this comparison happens, we need to check out which element is greater than the other one. If the previous element is greater than the next one, like in this case, 16 is greater than that of 15, so we need to perform a swap operation. That's the first step. So when we swap these elements, the new array will become 15, 16, 7, 9, and 6. Nothing happened with the rest of the elements. Then we will move our pointer to the next element, that's your 16. Now we will do the comparison between 16 and the adjacent, adjacent element is 7. So when we do the comparison between 16 and 7, we can better see 16 is greater than that of 7. So we are supposed to do the square population. After swapping, the elements now will become. 15, 7, 16, 9, and 6. Similarly, now we will do the comparison between 16 and 9. 16 is greater than that of 9, so we have to do the swap operation again. So when we do the swap operation, my new array becomes 15, 7, 9, 16, and 6. Again, I will compare 16 with that of 6, and it is again greater than that of 6. So, my array will now become 15, 7, 9, 6, and 16. So, if we pay a close attention to the, this final array which we have got, we can very well see that 16 is the largest element in the given array. So the name of this uh, sorting is called as bubble sort because it is based on the technique that the bubbles will pop out from the water. It is like that. That's why we call it as a bubble sort. So 16 is the largest element. So it has bubbled out from the rest of the element and it has reached at its required position. This is the final position of 16. And after that, it will not be moving anywhere. These entire steps that we have used, this is called as the pass. After the end of my first pass, we can get will see that the largest element is there at the last position at its final destination. But with the end of my first pass, my entire array has not been sorted. The new array which I have got now is 15, 7, 9, 6, and 16. So I need to perform 
the steps all over again so that all my elements in the given array are in the sorted manner. So now I will start from there doing the comparison between the adjacent elements again. So now I will compare 15 with that of 7. So 15 when compared with 7, it is greater than that of your 7th element. So the swap operation will take place. So it will become 7, 15, 9, 6 and 16. Again, the comparison will happen between 15 and 9. 15 is again greater than that of 9. So the data will be swapped. After the swapping, the new data set will become 7, 15, sorry, 7, 9, 15, 6, and 16. Again, the pointer will move forward. We do, will do the comparison between 15 and 6. 15 is greater than that of 6. So in this case, it will become 7, 9, 6, 15, and 16. The next operation will again compare 15 with that of 16. When you compare 15 with that of 16, you know that 15 is smaller than that of 16, so you have to do nothing. So after this, the array will remain same as this one. And by the end of my second pass, you will you can very well see that their two elements are at the required total. 15 is the second largest element and 16 is my largest element in the given data set. So this is the end of my second pass. So by the end of my second pass, two elements has popped out to go at the required positions. Now we need to continue this process and the new data set which I have got now is 7, 9, 6, 15 and 16. We need to repeat this process till the time we do not have a final sorted error. So we'll do the comparison between 7 and 9. 7 is less than that of 9. So nothing happens. So we will do nothing in this case. Now we will do the comparison between 7, 9 the comparison will happen between 7, uh, the 9 will be compared with that of 6. 9 is greater than that of 6. So the new data set will be 7, 6, 9, 15, and 16. As swap happened because that 9 was greater than that of 6. Now we will do the comparison again between 9 and 15. So as 9 is smaller than that of 15, so nothing will happen. We have to do nothing in case the, the previous element is smaller than that of the next element. So the array remains same. So now 9 is at its required place. So even if I compare 9 with that of 16, nothing will happen because 9 is smaller than that of 16. So with the end of this pass, we will get to know that these three elements, uh, the largest one, the second largest one, and the third largest one, they are here at their required places. So that is the end of my third pass. Now, you can very well see that the, my data is still not arranged in a proper manner. There are two elements which are still not sorted. So we need to continue this process. So now the data set which I have got now is 7, 6, 9, 15, and 16. I will start the operation of comparisons again. So I'll compare 7 with that of 6. 7 is greater than that of 6. So we will do the swap operation. So the new array will become 6, 7, 9, 15, and 16. So next thing that we have to do is we need to do the comparison between 7 and 9. So 7 is already smaller than that of uh, 9. So it is, uh, we need not to do anything. It will remain at its required place. When we do the comparison between 7 and 15, again, it is at its required place. We need not to do anything. Similarly, 7 is smaller than that of 16 also. So that's the end of my fourth pass.
So by the end of my fourth pass, you can very well see that all my elements are in the sorted manner. So the final sorted list which I have got is 6, 7, 9, 15 and 16. This is my final sorted list. And if you analyze it very uh, carefully, you can see that the number of elements we had in this array was 5 and the number of passes that we require is 4. So if you have to generalize it to sort, you can say that to sort n elements using bubble sort, we need at least n minus 1 passes. So, for example, if there are uh, number of elements in the given array is 10, in that case, the number of uh, passes required will be 9. If the number of elements in the given array is 7, the number of passes which will be required is 6. So that's all for today's lecture. This is how we arrange the data with the help of uh, bubble sort. And by default, we, we arrange the data in the ascending order only, but uh, depending upon the requirement, we can, we can arrange the data in the descending order also. Thank you so much.